Welcome to CivilNet. I'm Salpi Hazarian. I'm the director of CivilNet. I'm also the director of the USC Institute of Armenian Studies. And for full transparency, both of those institutions, as well as me, um, we collaborate proudly with the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. And so my guests today are not just guests, but also friends and colleagues. Rupem Vartanian, Nubar Afeyan, uh, businessmen, industrialists, innovators, philanthropists. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. We've never been on this stage together. It's true. It's the first time we're together. Um, you know, with you, it's very hard to conduct a 15, 20 minute conversation. But what I want to try to do is to condense some of the conversations we have off camera. And I want to start with, I guess, what is obvious and what is always necessary to refer to. You together with, of course, Vartan Gregorian are the co-founders of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative with the Aurora Prize as its, as its leading piece. Uh, you're also involved together in the IDEA program, Initiatives for the Development of Armenia, with your families. You, Rupen, with your wife, have founded and together with friends support the U United World Colleges in Dilijan. The most recent of your creations is FAST, the Foundation for Armenian Science and Technology. Okay, so it's very easy to say you guys are all over the place. What's the thread? What, what is it that links these pieces together? I don't know why. I think it's a... Well, I'm, I'm happy to uh, kind of initiate and Ruben join. I mean, look, we, when we look as, as diasporan Armenians towards the future of Armenia, we don't think any one thing is going to make the collective Armenian experience what we aspire it to be collectively. And it's not up to us to decide what it will be, but we do know that there's some elements that need to advance and they cut across the education sphere, the economic, social, humanitarian, just, just basically bringing Armenia to a possible future reality. And so we started these initiatives and we connect them as much as we can, and we can talk about that a little bit later, so that, so that we can actually have impact in, in a meaningful way across a number of topics. And our uh, experience in other parts of the world brought to bear to the Armenian reality is what we've learned over the last 18 years, how to make correct adjustments, how to adapt to the realities here. And the more we learn that, the more we feel encouraged to try the same experiment in other areas as well, because we do think that this is a long-term process and we're well on our way to learning how to most impact and how to be for Armenia. We look at, we look at all our activities as being intended to be for Armenia and for the future of Armenians. Not just for Armenia, but also interlinked. It's true, it's interlinked and all is based by... 18 years ago, it was, we met with Nubar in Harvard and we spoke about the future of Armenia and Armenia 2020 was the basis for all what we're doing. And basically it's a very simple concept. We said, okay, a country like Armenia being small by size, a lot of challenges, but small by size, you cannot handle by one pieces and one pieces. You need to look over a holistic approach. This is why we got this all humanitarian, branding, uh, healthcare, education, financial services, uh, ecology, I know, the, the, the urban development. All these way interlinked because you cannot just pick up one piece and hope that this piece can change the entire country. So I, what we're doing the last 18 years with Nubar and other our friends and partners is trying to overview about country level and say, okay, how we can really make transformational in a country level using the different projects. We all interlink to each other because we will hope we will link, we will help each other. So the piece of this that's probably the easiest to understand is the United World College Dilijan. It's a, a, a residential. No, 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 you're wrong. You know, it's not the easiest to understand. People saying, why is not Armenia studying in a school? Why is a, Foreigners, why it's so much money you spend? And believe me, it's not the easiest. <laughs> well, look, I want to ask about money because what I, where I was going to go was both to talk about reasons and the scale of these projects. So, but in in what it is, United World College is a residential college where students from all over the world come, live for two years, learn, graduate, and hopefully create bonds amongst themselves and with Armenia. Right? True. Is that quick yes, enough? Yes. Okay. And that's the reason you're doing it is so that people around the world feel connected to Armenia as they go on with yeah. their lives and their careers. Okay, that one we get. 
Aurora, we need to talk about because it's, it too is multivectoral. Let's talk a little bit about idea because I think that's the one that does the work and promotes least of all of these. Initiatives for the development of Armenia. I think, what does that do? I think it's all linked to a uh, vision of Armenia 2020 and idea is a core element who provide this coordination and building this whole project in the incubation stage on the strategy which we've been approved by many, many years ago. And idea being, unfortunately or fortunately, this type of the backup uh, institution who provide all the support and sometimes doing invisible work. But Examples of that invisible work. Oh, for example, or the visible work. Or, or, or for example, when the FAST started, the first was incubation stage, where the entire process was organized by IDEA. FAST is the foundation for Armenian science and technology. technology. Yeah, we got other partners, but in the beginning, everything was a uh, cap fair. Uh, it was done cooked by in the uh, inside of the IDEA. Or uh, we are helping Sharaz Nawur Foundation to make this work around the Museum of Sharaz Nawur. His entire back office support of doing project make the implementation work. So the idea make it become like core provider of the service or like we're doing this um, projects in uh, culture, heritage and many other uh, projects in uh, uh, renovation, restoration of the monasteries or churches in different parts of the yeah, area. I would, I would say that idea's role has also shifted a bit and it will continue to shift as we, as we expand the activities. Think of idea as a foundry for projects that can have social impact in Armenia. These projects could be motivated by grants, by philanthropic giving, by collaborations with other entities. But what we realize is that there's nobody on the ground here that we could have collaborated with to be able to conduct major projects. IDEA was integrally involved in the creation and launch of UWC Dilijan. It doesn't, it's the, having a school. And Dativ. And Dativ. And, 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 and now Gimri. And now Gimri, for yeah. example. Yeah. So, so I would say, you know, that we've, we've shifted sometimes from, but it's not, to me, this is not a support function. It's not an incubator. It's all of these things. It's really a foundry. It is, it conceives, the, it is the people within it. It could be our own core team or external partners. It develops and importantly optimizes and iterates, iterates, iterates. And like any other new enterprise, the iteration is how you find what the, right, what the right solution is for the country, for the resources you have. And then so there's a massive amount of learning that's happened since IDEA has existed. And now we feel more and more that it can be a partner of choice, broadly speaking, for such philanthropic or social development And do you projects. see that that's happening? That people come to you and say, I'd love to do this, but more, I don't have the more, infrastructure? More, more, more. Absolutely, more, more. more Example, more. just one of somebody from... I think Ruben just mentioned we're, we've been collaborating with the, with the team that's getting the Aznavur uh, uh, Museum and, and Family Foundation up and running and doing the projects they're doing, profoundly involved in enabling that, in guiding it, in supporting it. But importantly, the mission is set by the people who are responsible for it. But IDEA is not just providing a fee-for-service, but it's very much a partner of choice. We have the local knowledge, we have the relationships, and we can give people a higher probability of success, we think. The success is what their idea can ultimately become, but I, we think we can be an interesting partner in implementing. Ruben, say something about Gumri quickly. Yeah, I think it's Gumri is very important other project where we got different stakeholders. Vahan Kolonyan did a lot of work in the ground in the uh, Gumri Hope project when we found the uh, research about... This is Vahan Kolonyan from Canada, from Canada who runs the Mosaic Institute. Yes, right, right. He made, and we've been supporting him with other stakeholders. But when this work was finished, we found the project that we thought it would be good to establish positioning of the uh, idea and other um, activity. Uh, I'm sorry, to put the project which will be really important for the Gumri Museum. It was important to have uh, some kindergarten and amusement park, the activities around youth can really social, social life yeah. possibilities. And we got yep. this amazing uh, gift from the one Russian donor, we got the support from some other institution. And it's all it's combination of bringing all these stakeholders together. One of the key elements of the what Dumar is saying is the idea is also is providing the trust. But this all be done, yeah. and we'll probably this is what we built during this 18 years of operation. And we said people trust us because they know what we're doing is finally becoming real. I think people don't realize that as for Gumri, it's not simply you know earthquakes, damage, uh, homes, residences, uh, workplace. It's not just that. I was shocked when I found out several years ago that there's no public transport in Gumri after six, seven o'clock in the evening. 
So what do young people do? Where do they? And Gumri is a very dispersed Why city. Yeah, yeah. So these kinds of social life uh, motivators are f essential if that city is going to continue to be a place for people to live, right? If you've been in a new district which was built, it's much worse. It's no school. Yeah, nothing. It, nothing. Just Absolutely. you can live in and that's all. It's, again, that's why our park is a, in the between the old Gumri uh, and the and new, the new district. This yeah. is why it's, which we found this place, which is, again, it was, by the way, supported by Trellas and our foundation. We bought out this domix and we made this all transfer. And now we hope it will become a new cluster. Okay, listen to me. The next time we have these conversations, we should have them in chapters. So, because I want to move on to the next chapter. Okay. Or a humanitarian initiative. Talk about something that's difficult to explain. Is it harder to explain to Armenians, or is it why Aurora is a, an entity that supports humanitarian impact and goodness outside of the Armenian world, or is it harder to explain to non-Armenians why Armenians are doing this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Before you move on, he about, said yes. <laughs> I want to just exactly using your methodology going by project. UWC Dilijan bringing world to Armenia. Humanitarian movement Aurora, making Armenia to the world. Tatev, making the place for local development infrastructure with the... Making That's a good. The, so it's, a, it's a different di di directions, but uh -huh. we are saying, okay, this project is uh, for international, this project for bringing to Armenia. Uh -huh. That's why we have a... And sometimes people, why is criticized? We have today's problem in Armenia, we have a problem of today, and it's not linked to my life changing today, which is one of the points we will, but saying it's a different project, like ecology, what we, ecology platform, what we're starting the project, is all about how to make clean Armenia today. It's more about relevant for today. But some of our projects, like Armenia, uh, the humanitarian, Aurora Humanitarian Initiatives, is more about how we, Armenia, can do something for the world. This is the first time, and it's not easy to explain inside of Armenia, but also, I think it's more easy to explain, by the way, for foreigners compared to Armenians. Well, I, look, I think, they're both both easy and hard to explain. It just it takes people who care about listening, um, because this no. is a pro no. But this is a look. These projects are are not a specific thing. These things are emerge. They're 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 babies. Then they become toddlers, and they find their own identity in there. And and as they're growing up, people will con constantly mischaracterize them and say, "Oh, you're this. Oh, oh, you're that." We're all used to classifying things the way we've seen before. Simplifying, and yeah. so mm -hmm. people haven't seen an initiative yeah, like black this. Black and white, one and so, purpose. Right, and so, and so look, the, it, to understand Aurora, I think people have to understand where the, 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 the energy and drive for it comes, which is a profound sense of gratitude that the three co-founders and as many more people who have joined us feel towards the fact that Armenians were given a second chance at life and that they need to deliver that opportunity in the form of action to give other people a second chance at life. It starts and stops with that, is that who better to have the opportunity to actually work on that. Now, how it manifests itself has taken multiple forms. The prize helped us identify dozens of people, not just the laureates, but dozens of people every year. The, the index, the, the research we do added content to the discussion because all people would do in this humanitarian sector is talk about what the big organization said. There was no on the ground research, so we tried to pull that, bring it to bear. We've built a community now. There's a real movement. The notion of gratitude in action is beginning to be understood by people. What causes me to feel gratitude? Might be that I survived cancer. It might be that I survived an accident. It might be that I was survived the genocide. It, the same feeling of second chance in life, which Armenians have lived over and over again, people can resonate with. And then what action? Am I actually getting involved at the micro level, helping one hero do their work? So I think, I, I think people are going to begin to, frankly, sometimes we ask people, how do you perceive it? And they help us tell it a lot better than we can. And, and non-Armenians do it brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But one thing that we also realize, we need to be more simple about our messages and sometimes going very clear. And for example, 120,000 orphan kids which was saved by different missionaries in 100 years ago. Today is one million Armenian around living in the world. This is a very simple number people need to get. So, okay, what it means for me is very simple. One million from whatever, it's be nine million or 10 million Armenians, is basically 10% of Armenians living only because somebody saved the lives of 120,000 kids in orphan schools. I'm not talking about other stories, it's just very, mm -hmm. a, a little bit helping, which now we're getting more clear messages about some of the numbers, some of the, like we got this, 700 stories about the heroes. Again, it's, it's a, something which people don't realize. It's a, 
it's a big treasury because by people, heroes yeah. you mean the 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 humanitarians today's, today's who are, heroes yeah not humanitarians who are being yeah, yeah, honored yeah, yeah. in in various I formats. mean think of something think of we we have over the 18 years of work this word survival keeps coming up we are an orphan nation we are a nation of orphans in the case Ruben said but as a nation we are an orphan nation we were completely uprooted unrooted and so when you go through that experience I think one of the things we've studied and talked to lots of people about is that you have to think about how can you revive, get back on your feet, and how can you thrive. And that journey applies universally. And I think giving that example, so for example, as a country, this country is going from survival to revival, hopefully to thriving. That's an example that's an inspiration to somebody completely different who's looking at it and said, what's ahead for me? So, I think these things actually do merge nicely together and unfortunately the world needs this type of message more than ever because we're living in a time where Amen. the crises are increasing and we've found a way to get Armenia to be in that conversation in the most unlikely way imaginable and I think that's why people always do a double take when, we, when they see us and they go, why are you guys dealing with this? Why aren't the Norwegians or the British dealing with this? And the answer is because it matters more to us. We are the product of this experience. And it's helped us a lot. Last uh, week I was at Munich Security Conference and it was the Tom Katina who became chairman of Aurora. It was great to present the story in a security conference which usually was people would consider like the most politician and uh, the military people. No, and, human security and, is what security. counts. And it's presenting Armenia like nation, not, not again talking about the conflict, not about how we've been whatever surviving, but how we need to be helped. It was a great opportunity for us. Also, our voice was like the same like we did in the UN uh, in a couple of weeks ago when we did not talk about how, how difficult we are in uh, situation, what we need to be helped, but how we can really use our experience to help others. I think it's positioning us differently. I know some people criticize us, saying the better spend money for Armenian causes, but that it's but people don't realize this is will help more us to bring more attention, more investment, more. Uh, partners, more people who will be consider us very differently. What we believe, maybe we are wrong, but this is our strong belief. This will help us to position Armenia in the world differently, which will bring more attention and more investment and more opportunity to. Be so free. think of it one other one other way. Think of it as in any of these conferences, do you have a, a section for problems and you have a section for solutions? There's no reason why Armenia can't be in both sections. <laughs> the notion that we're fully in the section of problems, we're needy, we need help doesn't mean we can't be also in the sex solution. And when we are, people look at us as healthy co partners and counterparties instead of simply the needy. People don't ask the needy what, what solutions they have to suggest. Often, in our case, they do. Now, what you've decided to do is take all of these disparate pieces together with FAST, the newest piece of your endeavors, the Foundation for Armenia. This is coming. We're getting new two. Another new one? Yeah, two Ach health Ach healthcare <laughs> and ecology has become in the in Well, this that's month. That, therefore you're covering mm -hmm. all of these. You know, I think, I mean, I look at you and I sometimes also say, I, another direction. But I think that that shouldn't be surprising. I mean, that's what you've done in your private and professional lives, right? That is how you live sure. your life. So why should it be different when it comes to the Armenian world? This is what it is, and yeah. I guess, you know, we we're lucky universe. to have you. We have a big universe, both of yeah. us, there's a big universe. Yeah. It's just not one corporation or one. No, and, and you've brought that style to the Armenian world, and, and that's a good thing. So what you've decided to do now is to take all of these pieces of your various endeavors and put them together on the same platform through right. the Aurora Forum. Uh, how and why? And when? When is October? Yeah, it's October 14th. What we realized, because we've been doing these events and it's become more and more visible in the world, we're getting fantastic people in our advisory board members and the, our laureates, our I mean, people who've been involved, our partners. And we got 50th anniversary of the school this year. We got Aurora ceremony four times. We got second time the FAST conference. We are discussing about tourism conference in one of the part. We're talking about the conference around the blockchain, about some of the other elements which is very interesting to the world. We said it's a very difficult to come to Armenia every time and bring the attention to Armenian world because again, in bringing end, people, bringing people, taking the bringing attention from the media, in the again all these people coming together. So I think it's great. It will be one what we benefit with Nubar is our network, right? Network. And it's a global Armenian network, what we name is not only Armenians, it's non-Armenian people also. Bring them all together and have an opportunity to talk, to, to present some ideas, to discuss. I think it's one of the biggest advantages, which we always believe Armenia had it, has, and we'll hope will have, is being the 
bridge between the different civilizations. Again, I want to remind all of us, Armenia is the only one country in the world, it's a fourth civilization, not big countries around us, which helping us to really understand these civilization differences. And if we can really benefit from this, because always also big challenge, it will be great. That's why Aurora Forum, we thought, will give us opportunity to bring multi-discipline, multi-directions, but also multi-civilization, multi-culture uh, projects together in a place in our Armenia and position Armenia. It's a place if you want to come and spend time together and also learn from each other, but also benefit to being together at the same time. So October? 14 to 21st. But we were also the 21st and 22nd, for example, or a Teach for All coming with the entire worldwide movement. This is the Teach for America, Teach for Armenia, yeah, yeah, that yeah. network. Yeah, yeah, it's just Larry Zonesan and Wendy Kopp decided to link to this, why people can come and participate to the Aurora and stay too much. Why we can see how more and more other organizations using the dates to put their own events in the same to time. To put Armenia on the map. Which is great, absolutely. With one, one week of, of multi directional. Yeah. Well, I hope we get a chance to talk about all of this again before October 14 yes. to 21. Um, but thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being the electrons and the <laughs> neutrons that are always buzzing around and forcing the rest of us to think along with you, agree, disagree, but to think and to ask new questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Stoppy, for always supporting what we're doing. With pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for following us on CivilNet. All of the organizations and information that were just mentioned will be in the description and the link because I know there was a lot there to follow. Thank you for following us on CivilNet and we'll talk to you again.